Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. It works. Kirk's got money. He's got security. He's got an offensive coach. We both like their weapons. They have nice players all over the offense. Green Bay could be good. But there's no proof that Aaron Rodgers in week one is going to trust a rookie college receiver from an FCF school or Alan Lazard being his one or Sammy Watkins being dependable on a flag route. That may develop, but Aaron has trust issues with his own family. We saw it in the playoff game with teammates for years. Minnesota early, they're bringing a new offense. Green Bay is going to be guessing. We know what Green Bay is going to do. And Minnesota's got tape on what they do. Love the Vikings here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Colin Cowherd. I think that was Chad Millman also. One of the I think he was one of the founders of the Action Network and then got a couple of commas and a bunch of zeros to sell it to somebody. Good so, for him. Interesting. Yeah. Didn't Cowherd also say the Vikings were gonna double their win total? He did. So they better get that first game if they want to yep. go yeah. sixteen and, then, and one this And then season. the next one. And then the next one. And just boy, I love the Vikings. I love the Vikings in every game, but this one, they'll lose at Detroit. Did he ever clarify that comment? Because he said on his show the Vikings were going to double their win total, but that he must have thought they were like a five win team or something. Yeah, they won eight he's too concerned. I'm sure he. Yeah, I, I, I bet he probably double back, double backed on it, and or just when you're it just, there, you floated it out there and forgot about it, like you do when you have a three hour radio show every day. Exactly. When you're a national take machine, I don't think you look back a lot. National take machine. I, As opposed but to I don't the think lo- you're like, what did I say about the machine, Br- Judd Zolgad? <laughs> what did I say about the Browns? You know, what did I say? Oh my God, I got to correct myself. I'd like to apologize to the Browns. I don't think you do that. You don't have a continuity director like you have in movies to make sure that the no. take that you had three weeks ago is lining up properly with this other take over here. So uh, this is Purple Daily, and we are take machines when it comes to the Minnesota Vikings. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. And a heads up, we are scheduled in a bonus episode today. Later on, should pop into your podcast feed and YouTube channel to have a very special guest, Kevin O'Connell, Minnesota Vikings head coach, set to join Purple Daily. So a little bonus episode on this Monday. And uh, all of this is presented by our friends at TCL. No matter what you watch, TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. TCL makes more than just TVs as well. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances, TCL.com to find out more. Boys, this is the first of, I don't know how many we're going to do, but we have a lot of training camp preview thoughts and questions to throw out here. And so today is kind of the first of our lead up to training camp, our official Purple Daily training camp preview series. And we start with a list of undrafted free agents that could make the 53-man roster. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way Football. all the way up, boys. Damn right. I'm ready with my takes. How many takes do you have? Uh, do you have takes on undrafted free agents or? UDFAs? Um, I have takes on positions more so than the actual person. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering how much These Zach nice McCloud kids, film you have watched. Oh, yeah. The, over the last couple well, of years. Well, now Bethel Thompson I have watched a ton of, so Counts. I can fill Counts. you in there. We'll count it. So I'm getting my my initial list here from our friend Arif Hassan from The Athletic. And then, so I'm going to take some of the stuff that he wrote and and give it to you. But then I also have my own thoughts on a couple of these guys as well, just doing some uh, some other digging. So let's give you, I'm going to give you four and maybe an honorable mention or two here, but four undrafted free agents that could make some noise in training camp and flirt with the 53-man roster or be a part mm-hmm. of the 53 and I think all these guys are more likely to land on the practice squad than the actual sure. roster. But these are some interesting names to keep an eye on, starting with center Josh Sokol. So he played college football at Sacred Heart. He uh, he got a chance to perform before the draft at the UConn Pro Day. So he got to be part of So I think Sacred Heart is Division One. It's a subdivision FCS school. Mm-hmm. And this is the SI.com scouting report on his pro day at UConn. A notorious hard worker, Sokol has been credited by coaches for being tough as nails and a tremendous team leader. The overachiever 
registered a 5.19 40-yard dash with 20 bench press reps of 225, a 29-inch vertical jump, 8-foot-3 broad jump, and 7.34 three-cone time. Ooh. That sounds wow. great. Oh. Good Lord. Oh, my God. Way better than... It's Monday morning. Yeah. Too much. I need to smoke. That's right. Uh, Sokol did some snapping during positional work and owns the versatility to play all three interior spots. So... Right now, if they were to keep nine offensive linemen, Christian Derrissaw, Ezra Cleveland, Garrett Bradbury, Brian O'Neill, and then probably Jesse Davis, Chris Reed fighting over the right guard spot, maybe Chris Reed as a backup center or a starting center at some point, and then you got Ed Ingram. If you keep nine, maybe Ole Udo for versatility, and then that last spot is kind of Wyatt Davis, Austin Schlotman. Schlotman, you Schlotman. got Kyle Hinton in there, Blake Brandle, but but Josh Sokol would be fighting maybe for one of those last couple spots. Mm-hmm. He's got he he's a center, he's yep. a young center who also can play guard. So he he's got versatility on his side. Mm-hmm. He also sounds like he's nasty as snot. Oh. Like this sounds like a guy who wants to. He's going to demand oh. that they install grass and dirt in. U.S. Bank Stadium, so he can just get his face in that grass and dirt and bury it in there and take care of people. He actually um, brings a dirt and mud patch that he just like a mat that he just carries up and down the field with him, so that he can line up in the dirty, muddy grass. Yes, absolutely. Just out, mm-hmm. so off the top of my head, I think center is definitely a position where you find guys. Like there are some high draft picks; some don't work out. Garrett Bradbury, but you know Burke was a seventh round pick. I want to say Jeff Christie was maybe an undrafted guy like you can find them and and it's a weird position because I really do believe that it takes a nastiness and smarts which is probably not the easiest combination in the world to find so yes I think that your call off the top of the show is probably right this strikes me as a really uh, probably high probability practice squad guy he seems like a Undertaker when he raises his hand in the Buried Alive match, Phil. Like all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, yeah. he just a purple Iconic. glove, a purple glove just comes through the grass. That's going to be Josh Sokol at TCO at the fifty yard line in a couple weeks. That's I bet exactly he snarls. Be. I want my center to have he a snarl. Snarls, yeah. Yeah. just like uh, yeah. Uh, well, you. he also he also has a last name that looks like Skull, right? It's S O K O L. So, <laughs> so going to keep around as a mascot? marketing opportunities I, here. I would have him for sure on the practice squad just for the yeah, just for the marketing opportunities here. So, so Josh Sokol as someone to keep an eye on here. All right, number 2. Undrafted free agents, UDFAs that could make the 53 man roster. Edge rusher Luigi Valane out of Wake Forest. Here is a Reef's write up, all right? The highest-ranked undrafted free agent the Vikings signed on the consensus mock draft board is edge rusher Luigi Villain. He was ranked 338th overall, which was above uh, James Houston of Jackson State and Andre Anthony of LSU, who both were drafted. So there's some guys that were drafted that maybe he ranked above on the consensus board. His composite athletic testing, football, which matters more for edge rushers than any other position, was better than every undrafted edge defender except Ravens signing Jeremiah Moon. If the Vikings only run four deep at the position, it'll be tough for him to unseat someone like DJ Wan or Patrick Jones, given their experience. But if he outshines Janarius Robinson and Kenny Willekes, he could make the roster as a fifth edge rusher. Mm. The fact that the Vikings didn't draft an edge rusher in April helps Villain's case. Hmm. I could see that. Um, I, I think it depends on, and this is the thing we don't know because a lot has changed here. What's the Vikings' intention defensively depth chart-wise, right? Like, are they going to keep four edge guys in switching to a base 3-4? Are, are they going to go with four? Like, I do have questions that have definitely changed from from Zim's years on what the depth chart is going to look like at positions. So, yeah, I'm, the fact they didn't take one did surprise me a bit. So this sounds plausible. It's just such an uphill climb. And I will say the majority of guys that you're talking about who make the team will do so because of special teams. Yeah. So so like they don't make it's not like, oh, you're great and we think you you could make the team and rush. That's a long term thing. But I think the majority of guys that we're talking about on this list, if they make this team out of training camp and with the preseason games, it's going to be, for the most part, based on their ability to contribute on special teams. Yeah, that's fair. So I'm going to put the third one out here, too, because it's 
in a similar bin, the edge rushing bin, Zach McLeod from Miami of Ohio. Or is he just Miami? He might just be Miami, actually. I think he's a hurricane. So here's the write-up from Arif. It might seem odd to include two different edge rushers in the undrafted free agents who might make the 53 list. Yeah, because neither one of these guys is likely to make the team. But McLeod earned the second highest total guaranteed contract of any undrafted free agent behind quarterback Carson Strong, who signed uh, out of Nevada with the Eagles. So they've already, you know, it's not like they committed $10 million to him, but they gave this guy a pretty good commitment to get him into camp and to take a take a long look at him. And that just might mean McLeod has a good agent. It also could mean NFL teams valued his talent high enough to start a bidding war. McLeod is an older rookie who enters the NFL at age 24 after six years at Miami. So he's basically Van Wilder is what I'm gathering here. <laughs> God, that guy had a good time. He did. I would have lo- I'd love to go spend six years there right now. Can you imagine the parties? Dude, I'd still be there. I'm 37. It's oh, yeah. God, you'd year- be like, no, no, no I got to credit. my I gotta 19th make up. year of college. Uh, he doesn't quite have the athleticism of Valaine, but he's savvy against the run <clears throat> and is well regarded for his hustle. So, uh, Zach McLeod as another option. Interesting. Now, when, when you give a guy that kind of money, you know, or more money, it right. doesn't, doesn't mean you have to keep him around, but it's interesting. And he, he's probably a practice squad guy, but he is is a linebacker, or that's at least where he played in college. And here's the intriguing thing, because this actually fits what they're doing now very much. 6'2", 235. So he's not like this big guy, it sounds like. He's probably well-built, obviously, but they are, yeah. I'm telling you right now, you are going to be amazed, I think, when you see this team, the linebackers for the most part, are going to be small. So if they're small and quick, they've got a chance. Where did um, uh, Real quick, where but, did you see yeah. the 235? Uh, I just did a Google of his bio from the U. Because there's Linebacker 6'2", 235. On, on football, college football reference, he's listed at 254. So I, I don't know. I don't know if that was, if one of those is outdated well, maybe gain or some something. Weight. Either way, like it's it's more linebacker size than edge rusher size. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Special teams guy, too. Yep, so there you go. Zach Zach McLeod. All right, number four here on undrafted free agents that could make the 53. This is my guy right here. Your guy? Telling you guys okay. about this. All right. Wide receiver Thomas Hennigan from Appalachian right. State. Your guy. Arif writes from The Athletic, the Vikings don't have a punt returner on the roster and very few players with punt return experience, except for Hennigan. So he had 62 punt returns in college, while his primary competitors with the Vikings combined for eight, all from Jalen Naylor. Mm. Amir Smith-Marset and Ty Chandler never returned a punt in college, and the only other player the Vikings named as a potential returner is K.J. Osborne, whose performance as a rookie in that spot was beyond alarming. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. Yeah. Who knew? That's fair. Doesn't mean they couldn't try it again, but yeah, it was a problem. No, no thank you. This is Hennigan's clearest path to the roster, and it helps that he was a skilled receiver in college as well. Players like Osborne, uh, Chesna, and Marcus Sherrills have made the roster solely due to their special teams ability in the past, and Hennigan might be able to offer that and more. So hmm. if they keep if they keep six receivers, it becomes more likely that Hennigan sure. sticks around, right? If it's five, I mean, right now you got you got three locked in, obviously, mm-hmm. and then there's there's more of a battle once you get beyond KJ Osborne. I think if they keep six, it means they're keeping Thomas Hennigan because the punt return thing, it it is a that thing. Matters. It's not like kick returns where you might only get 25 a season or something. You need a punt returner in the NFL. Yeah, and do not get cute there. Do not come up with some little spiffy plan. Oh, this will work. Yeah. Like, this is a position. If you screw this job up, your team is absolutely screwed. Like... Even if you find a guy who fair catches the ball, i.e. Bobby Wade, I prefer that to, oh, he muffed a punt now. So, yes, I am with you. I, I think special teams-wise, this is one where if you, if you like, make your final cuts and you're down to your 53 and you're like, oh, the, this guy will be fine, you are making a mistake. So, if this guy can catch the damn ball, because that's tough. Like, that ball is coming down with traffic right there. This is one where I think you have to take it seriously and have a competent person doing it. Well, I think it. I think your your expectation is fair that you just want the bare minimum. Don't twice a year muff a punt in a spot where you know a, a field goal gives the opposing team a win or whatever it is. 
But to me, it's more than that. They only, I think a couple was it a couple of years ago. They oh, only God, had yeah. like ninety punt return yards or sixty punt return yards all season, and yeah. most of them were in the last it's two ridiculous. weeks. I, I think they were at like twelve yards up until week seventeen yeah, or something all ridiculous. Season. So is yes. it is it that much to ask that hey let's 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 get a few hundred punt return yards here? Just you know, once a month, can you return a punt for eighteen yards and give give the Vikings a chance to kick a field goal or score a touchdown? You know, I, I don't think we should have our sights set on. Can you just catch and not fumble? What, like, can you do something <laughs> with start, but yeah. the punt at some point? Marcus Sherrill's, man. Yeah. Sherrill's was fantastic. Yep. Absolutely an ace at that job. Yep. So uh, those are your—I do have two honorable mentions here, too, oh. uh, from Arif's article here. And this, and this makes sense. It depends on how many safeties they keep. But they did sign Mike Brown from Miami of Ohio and Miles Dorn from North Carolina— Mm-hmm. Right now, if they were to keep four safeties, which is pretty common, it'd be Harrison Smith, Lewis Seen, Cam Bynum, probably three-year veteran Josh Metellus, who was a sixth-round pick Great. in 2020 for the Vikings. Because Josh Metellus has 500 snaps the last two years on special teams. He's cheap. you know. So that's sort of the bar. If you're one of these other safeties, Mike Brown or Miles Dorn, can you beat out? Because you're, or there's an injury of some kind, but you're not beating out the first three guys, so can you beat out Josh Metellus? So, there you go. I gave you a six, courtesy you of our friends at The Athletic, undrafted free agents that could make the Vikings 53-man roster. Hell of a job. Hell of a job. Thank Give you. me good Thanks. special teams. Special teams is a phase of the game that far too often we take for granted until it bites you in the ass. Which player is Judd Zolgad busting out his binoculars for at training camp to uh, to, to eye in on? I think I Hennigan, dude. take the small binoculars. I might take him, though. I've done that before. Mm-hmm. I think God, am I a geek? Man, I am I a should. nerd? Man, you, am I a, a complete nerd? I think we needed to be charting special teams, like like just find a couple of obscure battles. Hell, like Sarah used to chart everything. I know it's great. he'd be get, he'd get very serious and go off to to the side and chart things. It was very impressive. And that's how you wind up at NFL Network, probably living a nice, yeah. comfortable life. Ten years later, <laughs> exactly right. Tom wasn't too cool to work hard. That's the lesson. For all you young uh, ab- sports I admire journalists him. out ab- there. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, um, I'll, I'll chart things, though. Probably yeah, something let, Kirk. Let us know. Uh, we'll give you some recommendations on what we want you to chart, including punt return snaps. I don't think we need any kicking tracking because that battle ended in minicamp. I think some right guard tracking would be nice. Just you know the percentage the of snaps. Kicking tracking with where we watch practice from, far more difficult than one would think. You can't see it go through the uprights because sometimes it's like, did that go through or not? Yeah, it's hard because it's like tucked in the back, right? Isn't it? Well, like and you're behind? off to the side. Yeah, you're off to the side. And, and yeah, from the side, about. it's not simple. I it's, mean, it's awkward there. Yeah, so that's a little bit tough, unless okay. there, there's officials there below the goalposts who then help you out because they signal it. Yeah, I feel like they should just have that as a common courtesy to the media, the fans out there. Just I wonder make if sure. they use officials through most of training camp or try and use them. No, yeah, maybe you can track that too. How many different snaps had officials? Making sure they don't have 42 holding and false start I want to track like they did Sean last Mannion. year, for God's sakes. So I can call for Sean to be the opening day starter September 11th against the Packers. That's what I want. Okay. There's so a sure hot take for you. Those are reps down. Um, you know what's not complicated is underdog fantasy, especially with the football season on the horizon. What are we right now, Dex? Are we two, we're two months away from... Exactly. Two months from kickoff, week one oh, against the Packers. I'm so excited right now. And I've already got kidding. a couple email threads about you know, you know know a league with college friends and stuff. But if you're looking for the easiest way to get into a season-long fantasy league with underdog, there's no waivers, no trades, no lineup setting. You draft a roster, and if, oh, my gosh, it's I'm at brunch on Sunday and this running back on my team is inactive or something, that doesn't matter. Like Judd. Oh, it would be me. Yeah, it would be you. But hey, Dex, can you start my lineup? I won't care now. No, <laughs> those days are over. Those days, my high maintenance fantasy football days are over, thanks to our friends here at Underdog. Because they'll take the highest scoring players, and those are your starters. So jump into Underdog. The app is super easy to use. It's a blast. There's also pick 'em games, over unders, and stuff that can win you up to twenty times your money. So if you use the promo code SCORE S K O R, Underdog will double your first deposit up to a hundred dollars in bonus cash. Um, also, let's shout out our friends at Surly because Surly has been around. It's been almost a year since Surly jumped on as one Great of the, relationship. Uh, the presenters of this show. And uh, the summer of Surly is raging based on the people that have showed us their cans on Twitter throughout the weekend. 
Good stuff. Absolutely. And my, my fr- Friday night on the deck at, at the house, it was a... Oh, thanks for the invite. Brought to you by... Yeah, it was me, Dawn, and the dog. Uh, brought to you by two of Surly's b- best beers, Furious One, and then Logic Bomb 2. And I've been telling you now for a, a while, the Supremes are great too, but... Logic Bomb absolutely is the perfect match for for the um, summer of Surly. It's hot outside. You want something refreshing, not heavy. Logic Bomb, as Dex is uh, shaking his head right now because he knows, Logic Bomb is the answer. It's the solution. And yes, as Phil just said, show us your cans. I'm at Jay Zolgad on Twitter or, of course, Score North on Twitter as well. Surly, we appreciate their support. They've been fantastic to work with, and uh, we are looking forward to another season with Surly as the presenting sponsor for Purple Daily. What are people saying about the Minnesota Vikings? All right, we like to scour the internet and different TV shows and see uh, what's going on out there. What are people saying here? And uh, our old friend of the show here, Jeremy Fowler, used to be a Vikings beat writer like 10 years ago for the Pioneer Press, now an NFL insider at ESPN.com. So he has been releasing since late last week the 10 best players at every position in the NFL. And and the way he set this up is he surveyed more than 50 league executives, coaches, scouts, and players. So people in the game, on the field, in the front offices. Yep. And those people were told, hey, rank the top 10 players at 11 different positions. Voters gave them the list, and then they compiled the results, ranked the candidates based on top 10 votes, also uh, they also use some research and film study from ESPN NFL analyst Matt Bowen here. So it's just a bunch of people that are inside the game here. And the objective is to identify the best players right now, not a five-year window, not who's going to be the best in two or three years, but right now, who are the best players in the NFL? And today was the quarterbacks list. Hmm. I'm going to go through the top 10 here. Tell me if you think anyone's missing. Oh, boy. Number one, I'm actually kind of surprised by this, Aaron Rodgers. So people inside the game still yeah. think Aaron Rodgers, and he's incredible, but they still think he's the best quarterback in the league. Okay. That surprise you guys all? Um, Mildly, but, but since he is back-to-back league MVP, not really. Yeah. It, it seems like an obvious one. And I will say this, on lists like this, the executives aren't going to give this a ton of thought. So, like, they're, they're not going to say, well, Joe Burrow is really emerging. I think that they look at Roger's success the last two years in the regular season mm-hmm. and vote off of that. That's my guess. One NFC coach brought up an interesting critique of Rodgers that he plays it too safe when his team needs the opposite. Late in the down with pressure, he won't always take risks. On certain plays where he's throwing the easy completion on a smoke route, and it's a critical moment, you're thinking, is he really trying to win? Did you just say smoke route and didn't fire the football sounder? Like, what's smoke happened route. to the show? Smoke route. Declan, what's happened to the show? I don't know. I mean, we're talking smoke routes. Come on. That's my bad. I'm sorry. I'll be better next time. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, number two here. We don't have to do a deep dive into all these. Sure. Josh Allen, number three. Yep. Tom Brady, number four. Okay. Joe Burrow, number five. One NFL offensive coach said, quote, I hate to compare anybody to Tom Brady, but Joe Burrow might be the closest thing. What did he take? Nine sacks in that playoff game against Tennessee? Didn't flinch, hung in there. He's got a toughness about him and the ability to think through a game. Yep. And I feel like he didn't complain, too, which I think TB would have. Yeah. Like, it didn't didn't feel like his line got a ton of death stares. Yeah. Which I think Tommy would have given them some death stairs. Bill's uh, Twitter messages would disagree with Joe Burrow being fifth from what I saw oh, on the man. weekend. You, you're fighting a good fight or a oh, bad fight. Another quarterback fight for Mackey? Yeah. Sunday, I think I got I was, into a battle with some early. Cousins Crusader extremists that think that that uh, Cousins is better than both Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, which I don't I, I don't know. We just we can't talk football if that's the case. And no one's crapping on Kirk. But, but to say that. You'd rather have Joe Burrow, and the contracts play into it too, but Joe, even without the contracts, I think I'll take Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert getting better at age 24, 25. But there's a lot of extremists on the Cousin Crusader side of the fence that just it's tough to bridge that gap, man. Yeah. In our country? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Number six, Matthew Stafford, according to people inside the game. All right, that's interesting. That was definitely jacked up. Um, I uh, like he, him. He, he was sixth last year too. Was he really? Ranking. Oh, yes. wow. 
Oh, I'm which is even more telling. That. People in the NFL think yeah. way more okay. highly of Matthew Stafford than they think of Kirk Cousins. I stand People corrected, outside then. the NFL that put those guys together on rankings, I think have been wrong, and Matthew Stafford showed that. And I used to okay. do that, too. They are yeah. different dudes. One was the number one overall pick. One has a totally different leadership personality, is willing to take risk, but he throws interceptions. It didn't matter. They well, won the Super Bowl. And he's given the freedom to as well. Like, that's what I think people don't get. He was given, he definitely threw passes that a responsible quarterback wouldn't at times because of how that offense functioned. And some of them got picked off. Yeah, I think Kirk. Like, I don't think he melted down. But Kirk's conservative nature as quarterback is less to do with co- coaches putting the shackles on him. It's more, it's, it's, it's his, his ethos as a quarterback is, yeah. I don't want to make a mistake. And everything kind of builds from there. Stafford yeah. is not coming from that same place. Sometimes it results in a lower floor for Stafford, but the ceiling has obviously been proven now. He can be a driving force on a well, simple team. And also, you know, Stafford went from a bad team to a good team and thrived. Mm-hmm. Kirk went to a Vikings team in 18 that was pretty damn good and didn't thrive and didn't yep. make the playoffs. So, like, that, that's where the transition has to at least be discussed. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, number seven, Justin Herbert. On this list, where was he last year? He was ninth last year. Well, wow. Russell Wilson, eighth on the list, dropping from four last year. Okay. Deshaun Watson was not ranked last year, but now he's back and he's ninth. I'll see if he plays or not. And yes. then this is going to cause some controversy here. Dak Prescott is 10th. I know a lot of Cousins Crusaders think, oh, he's better than Dak Prescott. Uh, But here's what people say. A good quarterback, not a great quarterback. He has to play well in the playoffs at some point. Has to prove he can take the team to the next level. He's not in the top echelon. Uh, Another coach said he has good poise in the pocket, sturdy, always been deadly when they space the field in empty. Sometimes needs an extra hitch to confirm things, but he's typically, that's how about that, needs an extra hitch to confirm things. You got to play it. Dude. I feel like we're in camp ourselves right now, like just (laughs) rifling that football sounder. And then we have yeah. honorable mentions here. So consider these like 11, 12, 13, Lamar so they Jackson. Got votes? Yep. Some Lamar votes Jackson, did. Derek Carr, and Kyler Murray all received multiple votes. And then okay. in the also receiving votes bin with no other write up is Kirk Cousins. So what a crazy vote for him. <laughs> are you allowed to do that? Vote for I young don't guys. Know. I don't know. So, so Cousins, it doesn't say he's 14th, but they rank the top 10. And then they put three honorable mentions with write ups. And then the 14th name here is Kirk Cousins. So yep. people inside the game, you can, I think you can infer here that uh, they think he's about the 14th best quarterback in the NFL. Which goes think, back man? to what we've talked about forever. Like, this is where he belongs. They're exactly right. Which doesn't make you bad. It just does not make you a top 10. And, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how much more um, the Cousins Crusaders have to see to be like, okay, I sort of get it now. Because we keep coming up with lists and, see, and heck, our own list, right? And again, it's not like we put Kirk 26th, uh, but we all put Kirk in approximately the same area, and I think it's fair. Yeah, this is, and some of this comes down to value too. You know, it's the, the salary cap matters. It's a thing. You can manipulate it, but some of the guys above him on this list, well, almost all the, actually, almost all the guys above him on this list, except for, I believe, Aaron Rodgers and... Patrick Mahomes have higher cap hits, or maybe it's Tannehill. I think Tannehill has an astronomical, but Tannehill he does have an there. astronomical cap hit, which was a big mistake by the Titans. But like Kyler Murray, still on a rookie scale contract. Lamar Jackson, still, I think it's a year five of the rookie scale, which is right more, but it's less than Kirk cap hit. Derek Carr, less than Kirk. So uh, Dak's contract is about to kick in, but his cap hits less than Kirk this year. So I get, it, if you get the 14th best quarterback, but you're paying him top three cap money, there's no value right. there anymore. That's the problem. But if Kirk's contract was uh, thrown out of the equation here, and it was just the top 10, and you threw Dak out, I don't think I'd put Kirk in first. Like put, I, I wouldn't make Kyler, Kirk 10th. Lamar Jackson, yeah. I'd be tempted to put J- Jackson in. But the point is, like, no matter what his contract is, I don't see a path that Kirk Cousins can be considered right now a top 10 QB. Now, could that change with O'Connell? Absolutely could. That's what I'm curious about. But there has been nothing in his career to date that has changed that view for me. Mm-hmm. Contract or not. You know, it's, it's funny because, like, I was sitting there, Declan brought it up. You know, we had a couple couple adult beverages on a 
on a fun little lazy Sunday and, uh, you know, like to fire up sometimes, fire up Twitter and debate things with people. <laughs> and so somebody, I don't even know where this started. I think someone put a video out of, it was a compilation of Joe Burrow just dodging his terrible offensive line last year, just using his legs, his arm, and just kind of what it looked like for him. And he, he dodged it enough to help lead his team deep in the playoffs to a Super Bowl. And I just I threw out, hey, this is how to how to rise above a bad offensive line one on one. And of course, people take that as, oh, he's taking a shot at Kirk Cousins, which, you know, it's probably a fair assumption for right. the most part. When in doubt, I'm probably taking a shot at Kirk Cousins. I saw it, and you definitely were. But it, but here's here's my main point. People look at Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow, or any any quarterback that is having either. Well, Herbert hasn't had like team success yet, so let's take him and put him off to the side. But like Joe Burrow and all these things. Mm-hmm. And what they want to do is they want to denigrate those quarterbacks for all the great things they have as like a point for Kirk. Well, what? But Joe Burrow. But you know, what if you give him these things that Kirk has that are deficient? Right then, let's see how he does. Like the most positive things you can say about Kirk are negative things about other quarterbacks that you're trying to drag down because he's never actually fulfilled. What people like, what whatever people think is the best version of Kirk Cousins doesn't exist yet. It hasn't actually manifested yet, because it's always something. What I love about Joe Burrow is the always something. He rose above it, and yeah, the defense played well in a couple spots in the playoffs and whatnot. But toward the end of the regular season, those dudes were lighting teams up on offense with a worse offensive line than the Vikings. Well, yeah, but like he didn't have Mike Zimmer holding them back. So it's always something, right? And I'm just excited for the day where we can know once and for all, let's just get rid of the always something. Let's get rid of all the excuses. Let's stop trying to denigrate quarterbacks who are either better or have taken their teams further and saying, well, I mean, yeah, well, like if you would have put Kirk on the Rams, he would would have won a Super Bowl too. (laughs) Okay. Congrats. Like mail him a ring. So the Rams won a Super Bowl and it's congratulations to Kirk Cousins. Like it validates something. But we're there now. So bizarre to me. That's the beautiful thing. We are there. Like every but, excuse, but are I we think, there? If, if Garrett Bradbury is the away. starting center, then we're not there. Hey, they decided uh, an administration that's going to be offense first decided that Bradbury is sufficient, and so I think that that excuse now is gone. But no, because, but it's not. If he's bad, if he's not sufficient, right? But at some point, then it's going to be well. We'll see. So do you think, so the question to the Crusaders then is this, do you think the Vikings' new administration purposely set Kirk up to fail? Because if the answer is no, then it's like, well, you know what? They had a chance to make a move there and they did not. I don't think that's how it's going to be looked at, though. I think this is as close as we could come. It'll be how I look at it. It'll be how I weave it. I know, but you're not a Cousins Crusader. I know, but... You're still going to have people come at you and say, hey, listen, so it can be anything. If the offense is fixed, but the defense is leaky, it's like it's literally always something. But you're not going to have short of maybe once every eight years you see a team that just has a perfect roster in the NFL. You know, right. the the Patriots right. sometimes have right. had perfect rosters in the NFL. You're, I'm not going to pay you 15 percent of the cap if the requirement is that everything else around you, including the center and the right. tenth guy on defense, is all like all needs to be perfect. So I still believe firmly that we do not discuss what, what I brought up before, which is 2018. I believe that we've forgotten about it completely, but it, we shouldn't have because that was Kirk Stafford chance. That was the move from the commanders who are just a dumpster fire continually mm-hmm. to a team with a great defense and an offense that was cooking, right? And DiFilippo was brought in, in his mind, because he thought, I can run an NFL freaking go-for it <laughs> offense here. And the reality was, Kirk couldn't do it. Who just coughed, by the way? Pat. Pat's hanging out. Oh. In here. <laughs> There's Pat. <laughs> hey, Pat. <laughs> Pat's hanging. The, uh, we're under uh, massive construction at, in our studio, so there's nowhere for Pat to sit typically oh, yeah, outside. Oh, yeah, no. So. no Pat's hanging out with me. New carpet on the other, other yeah. side. It's very impressive. But anyway, my point is this. 2018 was supposed to be, uh, we have a offense now that is run by a coordinator who's going to make this a high-flying act. And it failed. And I, if I'm not mistaken, that was the year in Seattle where Kirk threw a ball backwards, okay? And so, people, but a lot of people think it failed for every reason other than Kirk Cousins. Right, well, but they're just John D. Filippo is a clown and does, didn't deserve that job. And Mike Zimmer 
was a training wheels. You know, he just didn't want to deal with offense. Yep. Like people but, blame 2018 not on Kirk. They blame it on the things around I'm, Kirk. And I am here to tell the Crusaders, God bless you, that was a referendum on Kirk. That was a largely a referendum. Nothing worked in part because the quarterback didn't work. But you look at that team, and for that team to miss the playoffs, miss the playoffs, and for Kirk to melt down in that last game was, to me, a huge mark against his entire tenure here because you got a taste of, of things. And now my question is, can O'Connell change that? Well, 09, or 09, uh, 2019, the defense eroded a little bit, but the defense was still very much top 10 in key categories, yep. and they, they still had a, a really passable to, to good defense. And the offense took a step forward, and they went to the playoffs, right? They beat the Saints in the first round of the playoffs, and then they got smoked in the second round. But people hold up that 2019 season as like, well, see, see what can be done? And I look at it, and I say... Nothing was really done in the context of franchise history. Winning a playoff game and getting smoked in the second round is just par for the course. Yeah. I could I could pay a third round quarterback to, you know, give me then give me the cap space to build up the rest. There's a lot of ways to win ten games and get smoked in the first or second round of the playoffs <laughs> in Vikings history, is what I'm saying. And it's like we celebrate that 2019 season. See? See what can happen? Oh, yeah, doesn't you mean the same thing that always happens to this team? Right. So yeah, anyhow. Just uh, let's be careful holding up Joe Burrow You're... and some of these other guys and saying Matthew Stafford and saying, see, this is a credit to Kirk. If he could just have these things, he would do the same thing. Sh show it. Show it. Your willingness to get in Sunday pissing matches on Twitter <laughs> really amazes me. Like it's the a, commitment. It's, it's a sport. It's a hobby. It's a you sport. call them debates. I got on there to debate. No, they're pissing matches. I like to get online in the morning, maybe throw a little little grenade in the room on Twitter and then. Maybe check two hours later and see what's happening. Maybe go out for a couple drinks, come back later in the day. I know how you operate. Maybe throw yep. another grenade in Just there. Just feeling good. <laughs> Just throw, a lot, throw another tweet in there. Go to the fridge, get something else out, throw another little tweet in there. And the next thing you know, you got a full-scale pissing match. Uh, what If you're going to the fridge to get some food on your Livia plan, what what does that look like? Uh, that, you, that looks like... that. In the Zolgad household, my good man, that looks like a very responsible ad adventure. And I want to talk right now about teamwork because I've been talking about this for a few weeks. I'm down uh, 40 pounds, and the lovely Dawn has joined me on the weight loss journey, and she is already down within the first three weeks or so. 10 pounds supporting each other, holding each other accountable. It's fantastic. And now I want to tell you, let my friends help you look and feel your best with their Simple Start Plan, only $59. With a Simple Start Plan, you know what you get? One-on-one -on -one personalized and guided support online or in person, whichever is most convenient for you. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. Teamwork is the best approach. Hey, we got some uh, some new friends here last month, and... Uh... And the company is called Equity Partners. So Ryan is one of the owners of Equity Partners, and he's been a daily listener of Purple Daily. We got a chance to meet him out at the Purple Daily draft party. And so here's what Equity Partners can help you with if you're in the market to sell a house. First of all, with their WeHab program, they will partner with you to fix up your home before you put it on the market. So whether it's just little tweaks to your home or full remodels, that's what they specialize in. And this might be the biggest benefit. You can move before you sell. You don't have to worry about timing things up, which is kind of a pain. You can put offers in on your next home, non-contingent on the sale of yours, which is huge. Find out more at equitypartnersmn.com, equitypartnersmn.com. All right, what else are people saying about the Vikings here in the last few minutes of the show? Randy Moss out of Monday Night Football, boys. The legendary former Vikings receiver reportedly negotiated a new contract with ESPN, and according to the New York Post, the contents of the deal included his exit from Monday Night Football. Moss was mm -hmm. ultimately the one that made the decision to discontinue the show on Monday nights. Uh, Mike Florio pointed to the tight traveling schedule as being a possible reason for this decision because he's doing the Sunday thing, I think, in Bristol, and then yes. the Monday thing, wherever Monday Night Football is. On top of all the homework and demands that come with the job, there's flying into all these different cities, back-to-back -back nights. The mileage does begin to add up, especially when you're rich and you don't need to travel exactly. that much if you don't want to. He's probably still making very good money just to do Sundays. So uh, are yeah. you guys going to miss Randy Moss? Is he ducking Joe Buck? Is he ducking Joe Buck? I don't Joe think he Buck? gives a crap. 
I don't think Randy oh, cares no. about that one. Like it, no. it's a good it's a good theory, and if he were to come out and talk about that, it'd be awesome because it'd be great fun. But my guess is that you hit it with he's rich, and do you really need to get done with the Sunday shows, right? And jump on a plane to uh, Santa Clara, California, Los Angeles. If I'm Moss, I'm Buffalo. like, no. And, and like, I can't see Moss on the airplane with like notes out trying to study up on things. And I, that just doesn't strike me as him. So my guess is it doesn't have to do with Joe Buck. I wish it did. But at some point in time, you're probably like, you know what? I'm going to go home and count my cash. But I'll still work Sundays. But I'm going to go home and count my cash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dex? I like it. I, I don't mind it. I, I'm curious how RG3 also does in the booth. I think he's going to be a replacement for him on Monday Night Football. Uh, he's not, so, is he in the booth? No, he's in the... Or he's in the... Uh, studio. The this, studio this, this where, pre-game studio stuff, right? Right. So okay. so RG3 got added to that. I'm, I am I kind of liked RG3, um, but I will miss Randy. I love Randy Moss. The more Randy Moss, the better, in my opinion. So I, I will definitely miss it. Yeah, I don't... Uh can't watch the Sunday show as much because I don't like the host. I don't like Samantha Ponder. I can't do oh it. You just uh, grenades all over the place. Yeah. Well, it's personal. Maybe, maybe she'd be just more like she, she didn't you. block me unnecessarily 10 years ago. Maybe I mean, I'd have a different You're a big of her. Dick Bramer fan. He blocked you. If she didn't search Christian Ponder's name on Twitter and block everyone who was criticized. Bramer. He blocked you. I know. He's, these people. Still watch the twins. Overly sensitive people on Twitter. It's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, but I will. That. I will miss. I will miss seeing Randy Moss on on Monday nights. RG three. He's all right. Oh. He's okay. He's pretty good. I think no he's. Randy uh, Moss, though. And and I actually think that he wants to do this. Like Moss, I think it's just for fun, and he's good. But I think RG three is invested. Yeah. Well, he has to be financially. I mean, I'm sure he made enough money with his first contract or second one, but yeah, RG three probably needs to make more money in media than Randy Moss does compared to their. Yes. Uh, career earnings. Um, Dex, we got a fun event coming up. 3M Open is back again for like the fourth or fifth year here. That's right. Yeah. Cam Champ's going to come back to uh, defend his title. We got Jason Day coming. Uh, there's going to be a lot of former PGA Tour winners coming to the 3M Open July 18th to the 24th. Go to 3MOpen.com slash tickets to get more. 3MOpen.com slash tickets to learn more. Uh, it's going to be a blast. TPC Twin Cities. Go check it Put out. Put your cell phone open. down, Declan. I think I think Patrick Royce is going there as we speak right now. That's uh that that's he literally left the studio to go get his tickets at the 3M <laughs> Open at TPC <laughs> Twin Cities. Barrels that is, in, yeah, no, coughing, not my phone cell going phone. off. Judd's all good. Amazing. Uh, also, our friends at Federated. So later on this month, July 24, 25th, is the Federated Challenge, which has helped raise 44 million dollars for Big Brothers Big Sisters since 2005, and um, it's just a great program for children facing adversity to be connected with strong, enduring, mentoring relationships to change their lives and give them brighter futures, better schools, et cetera. If you want to find out how you can contribute to the cause here or maybe become a big yourself, go to federatedchallenge.org. That's federatedchallenge.org. All right, boys. Kevin O'Connell will join the show in a bonus episode today on Purple Daily. Looking forward to that. That'll be fun. Maybe we can get him to do a skull chant that was better than the one that he did on McAfee. I wouldn't Probably suggest not. it. Didn't seem comfortable. <laughs> no. Just make him wildly uncomfortable in the first 30 seconds and then see what happens. But uh, be on the lookout for that. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment.